hello ladies and gentlemen welcome back to exotic astrology and finally many people had requested me to make a video on janmashtami so finally the video is out today janmashtami meditations what lessons can we take during this great festival and from lord krishna's life and how can we understand him as a person and how can we behave in a way that he gets attracted to us and we also get attracted to him and we can obtain him finally so that's the goal all right so if you are new to the channel and if you have not yet subscribed then please subscribe to the channel and if you want a consultation regarding your life or your horoscope or your marriage or your career or your health in general you can go to my website and book a reading with me you will find the link to the website in the description section of this video below and before i begin as i always say god is there with you all the time just look to him and you will find him and even if you don't find him you will definitely find him on janmashtami at least hopefully <laughs> okay so janmashtami as we know is the appearance of lord krishna now it's not his birthday actually it is his appearance birthday is for people like you and me and everybody else but god doesn't take birth he simply appears the example is given in the scriptures of the sun sun doesn't take birth it simply appears so tomorrow morning there will be sunrise so it is not that the sun has taken birth the sun is always there but as per time it appears so lord krishna is also god and so he does not uh, take birth he simply appears whenever he wants of course by his sweet will so that is why we do not say janmashtami is krishna's birthday we say janmashtami is krishna's appearance day okay so this is the day when he had appeared and when he appeared in the jail of kamsa where vasudev and devaki were there it was pitch dark and the universe was trembling from the fear of the great demon kams or in english as they say kamsa because he had terrorized the entire universe he had even defeated indra and he had imprisoned so many kings and his own great father maharaj ugrasen was under captivity in his own kingdom can you imagine because kamsa had usurped the power forcefully from his father and he had sent his father to the jail so whenever when lord krishna was born there was the situation was very bad so it was not a very rosy situation you know that uh, birds are chirping it's nice morning and somebody is born it's, it was not like that it was pitch dark he was born in the midnight exact because so that also shows that sometimes we do not take to spirituality unless everything is dark so i repeat we will only take to spirituality when we do not see any hope elsewhere in this material world only then krishna appears because only then we allow krishna to take birth otherwise we don't allow him you see because otherwise we are very happy in delighting in our family life with our husband with our wife with our girlfriend with our boyfriend everything is fine everything is good everything is nice amazing wonderful but then suddenly one day something happens and everything looks pretty dark oh there's a break up there's a divorce or somebody died so in those dire situations only we take to spirituality most of us most of us learn the lessons learn lessons the hard way actually but the best thing is even if we learn our lessons at least at that time and we take to spirituality then lord krishna will appear the way he appeared in the womb of devaki of course and before lord krishna was about to be born all the demigods like indra chandra varuna shiva brahma everybody used to come to the jail nobody could see them of course but they would come and they would glorify how great devaki was because she was the one who would give birth to the supreme personality of god at krishna himself so everybody would come and offer their prayers and their praises to devaki and they would say oh devaki you are the luckiest woman to have ever <laughs> taken birth you are like the mother of god of course of course he does not come into a womb like you and me he decides when he want to take birth 
where he wants to take birth when he will appear why he will appear and lord krishna also says in the gita the purpose of his appearance for every avatar of course paritranaya sadhuna vinashaya ch duskritam dharma sanstapan arthaya sambhavami yuge yuge paritranaya sadhuna vinashaya ch duskritam that i protect the sadhus and my great devotees vinashaya ch duskritam i extinguish i annihilate the demons or the miscreants who are creating terror in this society yes paritranaya sadhuna vinashaya ch duskritam dharma samsthapanarthaya and and to establish the principles of religion sambhavami yuge yuge every yuga i descend that that is the purpose of god so sometimes people say what is the purpose of avatars so this is the purpose of avatars this shloka says why god appears time to time in incarnation forms so when lord krishna was born before that the demigods used to come and praise devaki and then when he was born as we all know he was taken from the jail by vasudev and he was taken to gokul where nanda maharaj was there and when he was taken there it was raining heavily yamuna was flooded that time and yamuna devi she was so enthusiastic that god himself lord vishnu himself has taken incarnation and now finally i can touch his feet <laughs> and so yamuna was very yamuna was looking very disturbed externally it was going very high going very down now she wanted to touch krishna's feet and then finally she succeeded when krishna allowed her to touch the feet and then krishna was taken there to gokul and then we all know so many demons he had killed so all the demons they personify different demoniac tendencies which are inside us like he had killed putna yes so putna who putna was putna was the lady who dressed herself as a very beautiful lady but she was a demoness inside and she wanted to kill krishna by feeding her the po- poison feeding him the poisonous breast milk from her body which had the kalkut wish in i mean her nipples were tainted with the kalkut wish which is a very deadly poison so she thought that i will put this poison in krishna's mouth when he drinks my Uh, milk uh, from my breast and then he will die <laughs> so then krishna he knew of course and it is said that when krishna saw that putna has come and krishna is god so he already knows why putna had come and what she wanted to do so it is said that krishna closed his eyes when he saw putna now there are different explanations which the acharyas give for this one of the explanations the acharyas give is that krishna was thinking that first time somebody is coming to feed me milk and i have to kill her you see <laughs> and then krishna was also feeling that oh my god the first person i have to kill is a woman that's terrible so that is why also krishna closed his eyes and then when putna saw krishna that little baby krishna then putna got a feeling of being like a mother for a moment she got that feeling although she wanted to kill krishna but for some slight moment she also felt as if oh maybe this is my child i will feed my milk to him and lord vishnu's other another name is nimesh and he's also another name is animesh so this means lord vishnu is the one who blinks his eye and who does not blink his eye yes these are the two names nimesh and animesh now how can somebody blink his eye and never blink his eye that's contradictory right but it is possible when lord vishnu does that only he can do it because uh, when we say that he does not blink his eye it means that when somebody is doing something good for him he will always put his eyes wide open and he will always keep seeing who is doing good for me 
and when somebody is doing something bad he will close his eyes like this means he will not see so that is why he is known as nimesh and animesh simultaneously <laughs> beautiful it is and then so that is why krishna had closed his eyes because he did not want to see that she is having that evil intention inside and when she started feeding him her milk krishna touched her nipples and when he touched it was so hard <laughs> putna felt as if my life here is going out from my body i will die now and then she started to pull and throw krishna out from her breast but all her efforts in vain krishna sucked the entire life here and she felt as if i will die <laughs> and then she ran away from the house and then she went outside and then when difficult situations were there which means when she was about to die she could not pretend that she was a beautiful lady her ugly form came out yes her ugly ghastly looking demoness that form came out and then of course krishna killed him uh, killed her and putna perished and then because putna for once in a while had developed a desire to be like krishna's mother because she had got that emotion when she had seen krishna for just a while so lord krishna had given her very special position in the spiritual world she became a nurse in the spiritual world nurse is like one who serves yashoda mai she is like a mother only in one way <laughs> so there's one of the acharyas who also sings a song that krishna lord krishna you are so great that a lady who wanted to feed poison to you and kill you you had given her the position of nurse when when she died you i mean when she was killed by krishna krishna had sent her back to the spiritual world then and there itself so you are so great that if anybody tries to kill you even you award such benedictions to that lady also so what all can you award to that person who wants to go close to you all the time yes so you you we don't know what you will award to that person god knows only you know <laughs> so then we also have this story of the fruit seller who once came to krishna and she wanted to sell fruits to krishna but the moment she had seen krishna she was so much mesmerized she was so amazed by seeing this beautiful form that she gave all the fruits which she had and she did not accept anything in return from krishna because she was like oh this baby is so beautiful i want to give him all the fruits take it take it take it i don't want anything i just want to give you and then later on she goes back home and then when she sees her pot that bag where where she used to take the fruits then she saw that they that bag was heavily decorated with diamonds rubies emeralds lapis lazuli pearls so many divine jewels from the heavens everything was there so that's the lesson from that story that whenever we give something to god we never lose it actually we get it back in many many times yes in return and as lord krishna's story goes ahead he goes to mathura and there he does not rule the kingdom of mathura he puts ugrasen maharaj ugrasen who was the father of kamsa in the throne and then he restores the dignity of his parents you know devaki and vasudev they are again brought inside the palace from the jail where kamsa had imprisoned them for long 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 time actually so that's how the story goes and finally we all know the culmination happens when the kurukshetra war is there i mean i'm just summarizing all the things it's not possible to say about krishna's story in one video but i'm just trying to draw some lessons na the so then when kurukshetra war was there he also tried his best to stop the war by giving good counsel to duryodhana to karna to shakuni to dhritarashtra and to everybody whoever was there on the side of the kurus but as krishna says to draupadi once that i can try to do it 
to stop the war but they will not let it happen and although i am god but i do not interfere in the free will of the person so sometimes people ask this question that oh if lord krishna is god how how was he not able to stop the kurukshetra battle the answer is very simple as god he can definitely do it he can stop it there's no doubt on it but he does not interfere in the free will so he will only give you the proposal he gave the proposal to duryodhana that you give five villages to the pandavas and then there will be no war they will be happy with the five villages but duryodhana said i will not give them anything not even a dot of land i will give which comes at the tip of the needle and then krishna said well then war is inevitable because they cannot sit like this and what's their mistake they have not done anything in fact you have usurped their property and you have insulted dropadi also so you have to pay for this and when duryodhana heard this his ego was blasted and he wanted to capture krishna and when he tried to do that krishna manifested the universal form he had shown the virat roop and then after that there's this war brutal fratricidal war where krishna becomes the charioteer of arjuna and by that krishna says to arjuna that if i want i can kill everybody with my sudarshan chakra bhishma drona karana whoever is there on the side of the kurus even now i can finish it but i want that you get the credit of killing all these people so we can see that in lord krishna's life that when kamsa was killed he did not become the king he put maharaj ugrasen in the throne that means he did not kill kamsa because he wanted to become the king some people say oh krishna kill kamsa because he wanted to rule no that that's not correct that's a half hearted uh, knowledge as this and a half hearted understanding you do, that that person does not know what actually krishna wants and even after the battle of kurukshetra krishna could have ruled over the world but he did not do what what did he do he had put yudhishthira maharaj in the throne and then he left to his own dwarka so krishna does not want a uh, name fame or popularity in this world as some people say that oh maybe he wanted name and fame and all these things and there are many interesting things which i can go on and on and on talking but let me see how much i can cover in this video and once uh, sudama had also come to meet krishna sudama is his uh, friend in the gurukul uh, where he used to learn under sandipani muni with balram ji so sudama had come later on when he was in dwarka and then sudama had brought some parched rice as they say na and sudama wanted to give that to krishna but he was hesitating because krishna is uh, is god he's like even if you take him as a king he is the ruler of entire dwarka so he was feeling like oh, how can i give this to krishna but then krishna came to know that my friend has brought something for me so krishna took it and he took one morsel inside and then he took another morsel and then when he was about to take the third morsel rukmini said to krishna that no nothing doing <laughs> not any more because if you take the third morsel then i i have to go with sudama because i will become his servant no full time servant because anybody who has given you s- such anything such directly na i i i will eternally be his servant so please don't throw me out of your life <laughs> don't take this and then we all know about rukmini right that rukmini had written a letter to krishna that these people are forcing me to marry shishupal but i only want to marry you and if you read the shrimad bhagavatam there rukmini writes very humble prayer she writes she says that i do not deserve to marry you because there is no match between you and me yes she is telling like this and then she says that but i will still not marry shishupal if you do not accept my offer and if you do not marry me i will give up this body by doing penance and then i will take up another body 
and I will again do penance. I will do this for millions and millions of lifetimes till the time you don't accept me. And only by that, one day hopefully I will be qualified to marry you. But I will not marry Shishupal or nobody. So Rukmini represents our desire for spiritual advancement, to unite with God, to be with God. So our spiritual desires also should be like Rukmini. Like Rukmini, it means that Rukmini said, I will only be with you, not with anybody else. So when we are also doing some spiritual practice, our state of mind also should be like her. That I will only do practices which, I will only do activities which take me close to God. And I will not do activities which take me away from Him. Sinful activities. Because they will make me forgetful of you. So that is that is what is there. And when she surrendered, then Lord Krishna came and protected her. And then Krishna married her also. And then we know that famous demon, everybody knows, no? who had captured 16,100 princesses in his harem. And Krishna had killed him. And then Krishna had to marry all those 16,100 uh, queens because they said that now because this demon has captured us, now we cannot go back to our homes. Nobody is going to marry us. So either you marry us or we will obliterate ourselves in fire. So then Krishna said, okay, you don't have to kill yourself. You don't have to punish yourself for things which you have not done. I will accept all of you as my wives. And this is the way how he married 16,100 wives. And then the remaining 8, because he had 16,108 wives. And the remaining 8, they have special stories. Like it is there for Rukmini, then for Jamvati, then for Satya Bhama, then for Nagnajiti, then for Kalindi. The, the, this way, for the remaining 8, there are special stories. It is there in the 10th canto of the Srimad Bhagavatam, you can read. And we all know Krishna's famous pastime in the Draupadi's Vastraharan, that Leela when Dushasan was pulling the cloth which Draupadi had. She was in her periods and her cloth, she only had one cloth around her body and that to that cloth was tainted with her menstrual blood. And Dushasan had the power of 10,000 elephants and he was pulling that cloth because Duryodhana wanted to insult the Pandavas and Draupadi also out of his envy for them and Krishna had ultimately protected her in the greatest time of need when nobody was there actually she had tried her best to protect herself she went to Bhishma she went to Drona she went to everybody and she tried her best to protect herself also she was holding on to the cloth by her all power and strength but eventually she realized I can't do it <laughs> So that time when she had raised her hands high in the air and she had called out for Lord Krishna, Krishna had come. And then by that, her dignity and her chastity was protected. So Draupadi exemplifies this principle. Dharma rakshati rakshitaha. One who follows dharma, one who adheres dharma, dharma protects him or her. So Draupadi was the perfect lady, the perfect chaste lady. Anybody could be imagining to be like her. So when, because she was very diligent in doing her duties and following religious principles. And because of that, dharma rakshati rakshita, when you follow dharma, dharma protects you. So she was protected at her greatest hour of need. Krishna had protected her. Of course, that doesn't mean she did not suffer because later on her sons also were brutally assassinated by uh, Ashwatthama as we know. And... She had so much suffering in her life. So, somebody, some people say that, Oh, I have started worshipping Krishna. Why am I suffering in life? So, don't think by that by worshipping God, all your suffering will vanish. Whatever is in your karma will come. Anyways, but when you go close, when you do spiritual practices and you try to go close to God, then what happens is, even if suffering is there externally, you will still have an anchor point inside your heart that whatever happens externally is fine but it will not affect my journey towards god so that's the beauty you see and on the day of jamashtami we can visit a temple of lord krishna nearby 
and we can also give some donations and we can also take the prasad in the temple and we can also chant kirtans and bhajans and we can also chant this mantra om namo bhagavate vasudevaya this mantra we can chant and most importantly we can associate with holy people who give us the knowledge of the scriptures on the day of the mastami and in general also and we can also try to read scriptures like the bhagavad gita because that is what krishna has spoken so when we read that then we will understand who krishna is and then we will be able to understand how we can go close to him what krishna says in the gita what he expects from us what he wants us to do for our own good so that we obtain spiritual elevation it is not for him it is for us and what all i can say he is famous for his beauty you know he has this three fold bending form tribhangal alitam and there's a funny past time when in it's there in the 10th canto of bhagavata maybe somebody some some of you have read it already but one day what happens krishna is sitting with rukmini in his palace and krishna was thinking let me do some prank <laughs> so krishna told to rukmini that oh look at you you are so beautiful why are you staying with a black man like me <laughs> because lord krishna's complexion is black he is known as sham sundar that cloud which is about to rain that is his color with the peacock feather which he has in his head so krishna said to rukmini that oh look you are so good looking and i am so black <laughs> and where are you and where am i na there is no comparison between both of us maybe you could have married some other king na maybe he he would be more eligible to marry you but i am definitely not eligible so krishna was doing this prank but it became very serious so the moment rukmini heard of this idea that she could have married somebody else she fainted she lost consciousness so she was sitting and immediately immediately she fell down to the ground and then krishna was like oh my god <laughs> and then krishna manifested two more hands the bhagavatam says he has two hands and like vishnu has four hands he had manifested four hands and he picked up rukmini and then he started pressing her cheeks and he started saying oh don't worry i was just joking <laughs> But Rukmini was still under shock. She could not believe that Krishna will do such pranks, na. And then Rukmini said, "No, no, I can't imagine. I will die if I, if you are not there with me, I will die. I, I cannot conceive of the idea that you are not there with me. So please don't make such jokes the next time." <laughs> so we can keep going on and on and on, and YouTube will send me notice that you are uploading too many videos. You are not allowed. Okay. so i will stop here it's almost half an hour so please utilize this time 3rd september and in some places in second depending on wherever you are staying and this day you can pray to lord krishna for his protection protection for what material things well of course but more most importantly protection of the soul that he gives you the company of the right people in whose association you can carry on your spiritual life like a spiritual friend or a spiritual guide or a guru or anybody that is the biggest prayer that you can have okay and we can always try to spread the divine knowledge on the day of janmashtami that would be very good i guess All right so if you are new to the channel and if you have not yet subscribed then please subscribe to it and if you want a consultation then please go to my website you will find the link of the website in the description section of this video below and enjoy have nice food have nice prasad drink lot of milk butter cream because krishna was famous for stealing <laughs> stealing butter yogurt all these things the, those leelas used to do because that would give the rajwasis the residents of vrindavan great pleasure in fact it is said that the rajwasis would make butter only with the dream that some day krishna will come and steal our butter so sometimes people cannot understand that how god is stealing and he is still known as god na? because one of krishna's names is makhan chor that he is stealing 
makhan yes makhan is what butter cream these things <laughs> but that's his greatness that he steals and still he becomes more famous but we cannot do that when we do that then the police will be behind us and because god cannot steal because everything is his ultimately so if you say that god is stealing something it's contradictory because krishna says in the gita aham sarvasya prabhavo matta sarvam pravartate so everything is his and everything has come from him only so he doesn't need to steal but he is still doing that to enhance the rasa of the place there and that govardhan leela past time is also there where to break the pride of indra he had lifted the govardhan in his left finger you see that this pinky finger <laughs> so he can and he had also danced on the kaliya serpent and by the prayers of the wives of kaliya krishna had spared kaliya's life he did not kill him all right and krishna is very famous for his friendship with arjuna of course and arjuna was his favorite among the pandavas because arjuna was also very close to krishna and they they had a very nice rapport <laughs> and yes he always used to surrender to krishna and he would always do what krishna said so krishna liked arjuna the most among the pandavas because in the bhagavad gita he says that among the pandavas i am dhananjaya dhananjaya is arjun so arjuna was krishna's favorite well why not you this thir <laughs> in fact uh, in fact it is said that when arjuna heard this he was shocked that among uh among the pandavas i am arjun krishna is telling like this because arjuna was expecting that krishna will say among pandavas i am yudhishthir maharaj but no krishna says among pandavas i am arjun <laughs> all right so we will discuss why krishna said that why he did not say among pandavas i am yudhishthir okay although yudhishthir maharaj is also dharmaraj but why krishna said that we will discuss it some other time okay some other days topic this is that's a big topic All right so there you go wish you good luck and you can pray for me also okay bye bye see you